I understand that it, going back to the all-star wrestling show in Madison, West Virginia on Friday, June the 2nd, I understand. And you can go to Jim folks for all of the uh, ticket information and websites and et cetera. But Brian, I've been questioning why Austin Idol wouldn't respond to uh, the comments I've made the past few weeks, because they're in Madison. It's going to be me managing Grandmaster Sexy, Brian Christopher, and and uh, the mass Superstar against the Rock and Roll Express, and Austin Idol's going to be in, in their corner. And I just mentioned I thought that they had picked the wrong horse to ride, and that poor at, is, at his age, Idol should not be messing around like this. And I was a little pissed because he demanded $100 more than I was getting paid from the promoter to be the highest paid guy on the card. And, and I understand now that he has actually said something about this and it tried to explain himself. I have a recording here that we made the other day when we were recording the show after we were done recording the show. And I just want to preface this once again, by saying, Jim, I'm not taking any sides. I don't really appreciate being stuck in the middle here. But uh, I'm not taking. Well, you're, but but see, here's the thing. That's that's part of the problem because it's not like you're stuck in the middle, Brian. You should be over here on this side, and 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 you know if you're not with us, well, nevertheless, let's hear what he has to say. Hey everyone, this is the great Brian Last. I am here right now with the Universal Heartthrob Austin Idol. Right after we have taped this week's episode of Austin Idol Live, which of course is available every Tuesday on iTunes, Stitcher, and at AustinIdolPod.com. And Austin, I know you don't have a lot of time in your schedule to listen to wrestling podcasts and hear different things that are being said about contemporary wrestling and classic wrestling, but I did send you a video, a video that was on the YouTube playlist. It's at tinyurl.com slash corny YouTube. And it was from last week's Jim Cornette experience. And it's Jim Cornette having a few words about this encounter, I guess, that's coming up in West Virginia. And I would like to get your take on what was said and what you're thinking right now. Well, you know, Brian, it, this is just weird, okay? I mean, life is weird, but this is just weird, man, because uh, I know. I know Jim had said something prior to what was on the YouTube, I believe. And, and, and what, and what he said was, uh, what really struck me was that uh, supposedly purportedly I had gone behind, uh, his back and negotiated, uh, a hundred dollar uh, more than he's making for this event, June the second, Madison, West Virginia. Uh, Gary Damron is the promoter, and I, I heard it, and, but I just ah, whatever, you know. I just I kind of thought it was I thought he was kidding. I mean, I thought it was a rib, so I didn't really pay any attention to it. But the second one where he he I mean he got personal. I mean he got personal, and it was almost like, gosh, Jim, what's the matter with you, man? I mean. Yeah, it's like he's throwing a hissy fit or something. But you know, I I let the first one go, but I, I feel like you know, yeah, okay, I, I'm going to respond to this thing. But but here's the here's the deal, here's the real deal. It, 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 he's not telling the truth. <laughs> he's not telling the truth about this because what actually happened. I mean, this event has been in in place for quite some time, and it it was actually uh, oh, I guess a, three weeks ago, maybe whatever. Uh, Gary Damron, promoter, uh, All Star Wrestling. He he called me and he said, uh, Austin, I, I, I had a I had a call from Jim Cornette, and he said it just kind of struck me. It, it kind of caught me off guard, but I want to I want I want to tell you what he said. And he called me and, and he asked me how much that I'm paying you for for the night in Madison, West Virginia. And I told him that, well, that's confidential, classified information, and I, I can't tell you, uh, Jim. I mean, that's between Idol and myself. And uh, Gary said he really got indignant and got, you know, got testy and everything and hung up on him. Yeah. So a couple of days later, I get another call from Gary, and he said, Austin, uh, you know, after Jimmy, uh, after Cornette hung up on me, He's texting me every day. He's calling me and leaving me messages every day that he's demanding to know how much money I'm paying you. And he's he's threatening that if I don't tell him, uh, he may come up with an excuse not to be there. 
And I said, okay, Gary, let, let's do, let's just try this. Okay. I said, for, but for whatever, for goodness sakes, for whatever you do, do not tell him how much I'm really making. Don't tell him what I'm making because right now, if he thinks it's a a, a hundred dollars more and he finds out what I'm really making, Oh, he's going to go ballistic. So just do this. Just tell him you're paying me a hundred dollars more and it's for road expenses, even though I'm flying in, you know, some food, some whatever, you know, miscellaneous I said certainly he'll understand that I mean he's going to understand that it's a hundred bucks just tell him that that's why you're giving me a hundred dollars more but don't tell him what you're really paying me well I guess he didn't Jim didn't go away and he comes back with this YouTube uh, rant and man it's like dude what is wrong with you I mean he's he's like an amateur and I know Jim, you know, and I like Jim. I mean, I'm not saying I don't like Jim Cornette. I know him and I like him. But, man, he goes on this rant and uh, he talks about uh, <laughs> about Ricky and Robert, the Rock and Roll Express, whom I'm managing that night, how they've, you know, chosen the wrong horse to ride on and, and uh, Demolition Axe and uh, Brian uh, Christopher – that you know he's managing them, but uh, I, but but the more I listen, I, li- I played it back a couple times. I really wanted to make sure I'm hearing what I'm hearing. But the thing of it is, is that the Rock and Roll Express, they've chosen the right horse. I mean, I'm a Triple Crown winner, man. I'm Kentucky Derby, Preakness, Belmont Stakes, all wrapped up into one. They're riding the right horse, whereas Cornet's people. His tag team, they've opted to ride a jackass. <laughs> I mean, they really because he's acting like a jackass. They're 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 riding a jackass. Rock and Roll Express is riding a thoroughbred. When you call him a thoroughbred, he performs, man. You know, he's got those blinders on. He's gonna do the deal, man. He's gonna do the race. You call him a jackass. He uh, he haws and he kicks. So th- th- there's a difference there. And, and, and then Cornette talks about, oh, idols on Medicare, Medicare, whatever the case may be. you got to be kidding. I- I'll give you an example. He, uh, he, he mentioned that we saw each other at, uh, I think it was the Charlotte Fan Fest a couple years ago. I had a line of people. I mean, I had a long line of people and out the door that I was signing autographs for and taking photos photo ops for long line of people. And, you know, I just happened to kind of look up for a second and I saw some guys, you know, I don't know, 25 yards away, 20 yards away at a table, just kind of standing there all alone. And I asked one of my security people, I said, who's that guy over there? And the security guy said, you're kidding, right? And I said, no, I'm serious. I don't, who, who is that? He said, that's Jim Cornette. And I said, are you serious? And the guy said, yeah, that's Jim Cornette. And I thought to myself, oh, my God, what happened to him? Man, is he aged. I mean, I didn't even recognize him when I saw him. He had nobody at his table. I got a line out the door. So I called time out to, to, to the fans or said, guys, do me a favor. Just sit tight for a second. I want to go say hello to my long lost friend, Jim Cornette. I went over there, said hi to him, you know, shook his hand, talked to him just for a couple of seconds, walked away and came back and continued signing autographs and taking pictures. But man, it left a lasting impression. And I said, boy, I don't know what he's, well, I know what he's not doing to be in that kind of condition. I mean, he, and he even admitted it when he was a guest on, on uh, Austin Night Live podcast, you know, because I asked him, said, you know, how you doing? Are you taking care of yourself? No, not really. I'm doing a little better, I think he said, but no, not really. So, you know, it, it, obviously, Father Time has caught up with the guy. And uh, I, you know, I tell you what I think it is. I think it's menopause, not menopause that women get. <laughs> I think it's, I'm serious, Brian. I think Jim Cornette has menopause. It happens to men. And it usually happens when they've had a a, a lifestyle that's kind of um, sedentary. They don't exercise. They don't eat right. And they just sit. I mean, I they sit. And I think he's just a sitter. And he sits in front of his computer. He sits on his sofa. He sits in his chair. 
is Lazy Boy Chair, which I, I think Lazy Boy would be very smart to come out with a new chair. And, and, and instead of calling it the Lazy Boy, call it the Lazy Jim. <laughs> call, call it, yeah, call it the Lazy Jim. He's sitting in his chairs. He ain't doing nothing, but now he's running his mouth. It's like he's got diarrhea of the mouth. And I, it's, it's, I don't know why he's doing this, but he is. But, you know, I have a solution for that diarrhea of his big, fat mouth. And I'm looking at it right now, and it's a big right fist. And I think if I shove it in his mouth and down his throat, that might do the trick. And I don't want that to happen. I don't want that to happen. But based on what I'm hearing from him, there's going to be a problem on June the 2nd in Madison, West Virginia. I mean, he said it. We're going to have a problem. Well, he's going to have a problem. I'm not going to have a problem. What I, I, what, what am I going to do? Back down from Jim Cornette with his little goofy tennis racket? you got to be kidding me. I mean, you know, he talked about me living in uh, obscurity and uh, and, and uh, dying to be recognized. I said, listen, here's the here's thing, Brian. You know, I mean, he's been doing the same thing basically all his life in the wrestling business. I mean, he, he relies on going to these events to make to make a living. Now, I'm not knocking that, but I am a risk taker. I knew when I wanted to get out of the wrestling business, I wanted to do other things in my life. I didn't want to just be pigeonholed to doing the same thing over and over and over because when you when you when you're doing that you ain't growing, you're not growing at all. So, you know, I did real estate 15, 20 years, had a great run, got a fantastic pizza restaurant in downtown Greenville, Vic's Pizza. So, I mean, I moved on. I mean, you can on any given day, if I just happen to be in Vic's Pizza and I'm hardly ever there, I mean, you see the mayor come in, mayor come in, shake my hand. Hey, Austin, how you doing? So, I mean, as far as knowing people, man, I mean, I know everybody in this town and this is a rock and roll town. We got a hundred restaurants just on Main Street. So I don't, I don't need to have my ego stoked like Cornette does to go to these events you know, just have someone come to me. Hi, Jim. How are you? I don't. Uh, hi, Jimmy. Can I have your? Audio? I don't need that. I mean, you. You know, Brian. I hardly ever do an event, hardly ever, and I get opportunities, but I don't have to do them. I mean, I don't have to do them. I think he has to do them to survive. I don't. I mean, I don't. If I, if I, if somebody, the reason I'm doing the one with in Madison, West Virginia, is because Gary Damron, he reached out to me, and I love what he's doing as an independent promotion. He's doing a phenomenal job, and uh, and I said, you know, this is something I I want to go ahead and be part of. I didn't have to do it though. I could have said, thanks for thanks for asking, Gary, but no thanks. I'm busy. But I decided to do it. And plus, I get a chance to see the rock and roll again. And I thought at the time, Cornette, but uh, things have changed. I mean, obviously, things have changed with Cornette and myself. So as far as I'm concerned, he can take it as far as he wants to take it. I don't care. Where, however he wants to take it, whatever. But uh, it may not be a good night for him because he's going to find out that I'm in shape, baby. I'm in tip top physical condition and I'm in tip top mental condition. So I, I think if he tries to get cute, you know, I think if he tries to get cute and he wears this little party dress, you know, and I, with his little spiked high heels, he better, he, I, I, he, what he needs to wear, he needs to wear some really top quality track shoes. Yeah, he does. Cause he's going to be doing a lot of running. So that'll, you know, run your mouth. And you better run. I mean, I'm, I'm not kidding about this. I'm serious about it. He better wear some track shoes. Because if I get any kind of flack from him, I'll chase him up the aisles. I'll chase him to the concession stand. I'll chase him into the parking lot. And I'm not, this is not hype. I'm shooting. I'll chase him until I get him. And if I, when I get my hands on him, he'll be begging Please forgive me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Idol. Yeah, there you go. Well, there it is. The comments of Austin Idol, as I've said before, this puts me in a very uncomfortable situation. Two of my great friends, two of the people I work with on a weekly basis, having this issue. But 
I guess we'll see how things turn out in Madison, West Virginia. I know exactly how things are going to turn out. And let me explain. Brian, obviously, he paid you a large sum of money to sit there and let him talk to me that way without you defending me, your friend of so many years. That's 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 the thought I'm going to take right now. But um, I, I agree one thing. I, I'm not going to need track shoes, by the way, because I, I'm going to use my regular shoes because the hover rounds don't have settings past 15 miles an hour. So I think I'm going to be good. But just and just so you know, Brian, Gary Damron, the promoter of all all star wrestling is the one that spilled the beans because he slipped up when he was whining at me, whining at me about how much this this event was costing him more than he thought because of the star power that he has on it with all those big stars. But also that idol made this ridiculous demand that he be the highest paid at blah, blah, blah. And then he realized what he had said. So he slipped up. But I didn't tell him that I, I was going to stand him up. I'm definitely going to be there. I'm not, I'm not going to stand him up at all because I want to see the look on Austin Idol's face when he flops because he's turned this whole thing around where I said that, he, you know, he was tired of being in obscurity while down there, you know, uh, uh, slinging pizza dough while that I was on an international tour and I was being seen on WWE Hall of Fame telecasts, etc., and he was down there with, you know, flour up to his crotch. And, and, and so that he wanted to try to come back and have this hurrah. And he thought that he was the star that he used to be, which he used to be a huge star. I was a huge Austin Idol fan. I've said this many times. Um, but he's trying to revisit that. And now he's, he's tried to turn that all around and swerve everybody's head around. Uh, and I'm not going to take a lot of time on this. It's just because it's so ridiculous. It's like we'll talk about. Donald Trump, but the line of people in Charlotte wasn't for uh, people to get his autograph. It was people waiting to give him CPR in turns because they were blowing up and he still wasn't coming back around when he climbed that flight of stairs and, and nobody could really, after that could get away from his table uh, if they did want his autograph because he kept nodding off in the middle in between Austin and idol. Um, and, and I will admit that he said one thing correct in that, that I am a sitter. I'm I'm a sitter. I like to sit. I sit on top of furniture made out of broken down wrestlers that I've knocked out with a tennis racket or stepped over to get to the top or on the way up. And it won't be a problem to, to sit on just another guy who, you know, I hate it when these stories come out like this, where he, they come back for the one hurrah and it, it ends bad. But, but he was right. There is going to be a problem of, uh, uh, in, in Madison on June the 2nd, but, and I will admit this, he is a risk taker. He's taking a risk coming to Madison, not even just in the match If Brian Christopher gets mad for what he's done and said about Jerry Lawler, who's Brian Christopher's father, but also, uh, uh, he's taking a risk, just the travel alone, a man that age for heaven's sake. Can, can I and, say, and anybody who eats his pizza is taking a risk too, by the way, from what I've heard down there from the health department, but that's just, can I be trying to protect people? May I say something, Jim? I, I think there's something important to note here. Uh, again, trying to stay objective, not take sides here, but it's important to note that you can hear more from Austin Idol every Tuesday on Austin Idol. Oh, no, 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 wait, no, Available wait. at austinidolpod.com. No, 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 you are not plugging his fucking podcast here on my program after all those things he just said. Austinidolpod.com. Oh, for God's sake. Do you are not plug it? No, you are not plugging that podcast. It, 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 it might be his only source of income coming up. He talked about me having to do things, and I've just talked about taking the rest of the year off the road. And he's talking about me having to do things. This might be his only source of income because at least after with both of his eyes closed up and one of his ears hanging off his fucking face, he can still be on a po audio podcast. Well, I forgot. Shit, he's not going to sound the same way when we knock his dentures out. He lost his teeth about 20 years ago. He can't plug his podcast. 